actually on. I think that's the problem, not us. All right, well, um, welcome to worship. God bless you all on this beautiful day as we enter the season of fall, and even as the seasons change, remember how our God stays the same and is faithful to us. Uh, a couple of announcements before we begin to worship together. Uh, I want to remind you that this Tuesday at 10 a.m. right here, uh, just across the hall in the hospitality room, uh, we will have a new Bible study series. We are starting a series on reading the Old Testament through Jewish eyes and uh, uh, interested to see the way those uh, scripture uh, passages open up uh, for us and what more we can learn from our brothers and sisters. And so um, all are welcome. Again, that's 10 o'clock on Tuesdays, uh, and it's about six weeks we will be uh, spending with this series. Also, this Friday, uh, there is a concert here. Uh, we will be uh, welcoming Katie Chambers with her cello, and she'll be joined uh, by our own Ryan Schuchman at the piano uh, and playing some of the music that they played on a boat cruising on the Dan Danube River, River. So we will try to vicariously go on some of that trip with them. Uh, again, seven o'clock Friday night, we'll be here in person and also live streaming on Facebook. And so please join us as you can uh, and let your friends know. I also want to let you know, uh, we are taking orders for mums uh, for our, that will be delivered for our worship service on October 17th. Uh, the last week to order those is next week. So October 3rd is uh, the deadline. If you have been meaning to get to that, oh yeah, your, uh, your window's closing. So <laughs> keep track of that date. Uh, that's coming up. And then uh, a couple of things. Uh, this is just a good Sunday to be at church. Uh, just across the hall, we have received a donation of all sorts of fresh fruits and vegetables uh, fresh fruits and vegetables are always better off in your stomachs than in a room sitting around in a box. So please uh, go after worship, uh, take these fruits and vegetables home and, uh, and enjoy them. Uh, you are welcome to, and thank you to Bill Welsh for uh, getting that donation and for setting that all up for us. Uh, so again, that's there after worship. Also, um, I have uh, one ticket for a concert that is Tuesday uh, uh, at 11 o'clock, and that is out at Oregon Ridge. If that is something that you would be interested in, the ticket is for, it's uh, the Groovy Sounds of Freedom. And uh, again, 11 o'clock on Tuesday, and lunch is included. Uh, this ticket is um, for whoever can use it. Um, and also prayers uh, for Les and for David on uh, the death of David's father, and they will be uh, laying him to rest and grieving together on Tuesday. And so that's what has that open. 
so um, keeping them in our prayers. Also, we are keeping in our prayers uh, Sheila Scarborough, who will be heading into a CAT scan um, tomorrow to find out about how the radiation treatment worked. And we hope to hear from her that uh, she is cancer free. And so we're praying with her as she heads into that scan. Uh, also keeping in our prayers the family of Dave Spencer, who was late to rest yesterday. Uh, just prayers with him as, as they grieve, with all of them as they grieve. And I believe that is all of my announcements. It's all the ones on my little note anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to invite you to please stand with me. Let's begin to worship together uh, by singing our confession together. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Will you share one, with one another a high five, a wave, or a greeting of peace of some kind? Peace. Peace some kind. Peace of some kind. And let's, uh, well, go ahead and be seated and we'll <laughs> sing together this time. <laughs> <laughs> <in that direction. laughs>
Good morning. 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 The first reading is Selections from Numbers, chapter 11. And you can see the verses listed 4 to 6, 10 to 16, 24 to 29. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat! We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised an oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I'm not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight and do not let me see my misery, so the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from James 5, 13 through verse 20. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? You should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over you, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, 
and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. According to Mark in the ninth chapter. Glory to you, my Lord. Jesus, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Will you bow your heads with me? Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for your word this day, and we pray for your blessing on my mouth and the speaking and all our ears and the hearing. In Jesus' name. Amen. So there's a thing that you can find in every fair and amusement park in all of the world, and it is the bane of all short little kids. It is the cutout of some sort of cartoon character next to a ruler, and the ruler has a line on it, and it says, you must be this tall, to ride this ride, and every kid says, <laughs> right? It is the line of demarcations. If you are not tall enough, sorry, you can't come here. There's all sorts of ways we do that in this world. I was looking at, I've got this little Lego Martin Luther. You can play with it if you're less than four, or if you are up to 99 years old, but if you're 99 in two days, I'm sorry, you can't play with it. My little music. <laughs> <laughs> There's all sorts of ways we do this in the world. We have these age lines. We have other age lines that decide who can go into a bar or a casino. We have gender lines at some places. Part of the great sin of our country is that not too long ago, we drew lines based on the color of your skin. Some lines are explicit, written and publicized, and some are not. You figure it out when you cross them and you get that look. But all of the lines say, these people belong and these are not welcome. But all of those lines that make that kind of distinction, well, they say more about the people who draw them than they do about the people who are excluded. And it's the disciples in our gospel lesson who want to draw some lines. There are people casting out demons in your name, Jesus. And we don't even know them. Who are they? Who are these people? Who is this guy? Who said he could use your name? 
just doing their own thing, casting out demons like they know for demons, that they couldn't even pick you out of a crowd, Jesus. So he told them to knock it off. They report back to Jesus. And I really can't hear that lesson in any way that doesn't sound like a kid tattling. Come back. Can you believe what they're doing, Jesus? You need to shake your finger and do something. But it doesn't go the way that they intended. And if it helps to understand why the disciples are so worked up about it, then you got to remember that not too long ago, Jesus sent them out two by two. And this work of healing and casting out demons, this demon thing was a little tricksy for them. They had some struggle trying to get that done. And so it's not surprising, is it, when strangers try to take their hand at it, try their hand at it like it's easy. The disciples are a little sensitive. And I don't know what they thought Jesus might do. I don't know if they thought he might, you know, start yelling or uh, stomping around a little bit. But Jesus says, don't stop him. And then he says, whoever is not against us is for us, which is definitely not what they expected. Do not slam the door shut when people are calling in my name. That door is meant to be open, Jesus says. And then he starts talking all this stuff about stumbling. And so here's the question and answer part of the sermon. What does it mean to stumble? Just basic dictionary definition. What's stumbling? Fall. To fall. To fall. Yeah, you might trip over something. Yeah. You know. uh, and what happens next if you stumble? You fall. You fall down. Sure. Yeah. You might get hurt even. Is that a big deal? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Depends on the situation, right? In this gospel lesson, is it a big deal for Jesus? If they're stumbling I'm seeing a, some like big old nods oh yeah it is a huge deal for Jesus when we talk about stumbling so much so that Jesus launches into this almost grotesque description of what you should do if your eye makes you stumble tear it out of your head okay well that's a little bloody for Sunday morning but okay Jesus <laughs> If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. And if you make someone else stumble, it would be better for you if you hung a rock around your neck and threw yourself in the sea. It is a huge deal for Jesus. So this is one of those moments where it's helpful to know a little bit of Greek. And what you would learn is that the Greek word for here for stumble is the verb is scandalizo, which is connected to a noun, scandalon, which is the word for a trap you would use to trap a live animal. Interesting, right? So when you read these things about causing to stumble, there's a little bit of a nuance about stumbling right into a trap and being stuck there. Whose trap? Well, the trap of the enemy of the kingdom of God. A trap where you don't recognize who Jesus is. A trap of thinking that the Messiah is about a worldly power that is here to smack down Rome. A trap of the enemy, which is the very evil and sin and death that have us all bound and that are the reason Jesus is here to begin with. Well, that's some serious stuff. And so it's not surprising that Jesus would take that most seriously. It is a very big deal to stumble and to get stuck in that place. Worse still, to cause someone else to stumble. So here's the thing. Who's ever seen a toddler trip and fall? Yeah. And that's so big a deal, right? They kind of bounce around a little bit, and as long as no one else is freaking out, they pick themselves up and they go right on. They usually don't get too badly hurt. However, if someone who is much older falls in the same way, 
Well, the older we get, the more falls become dangerous, right? It's easier to get hurt. It's easier to get stuck in a way that you can't get yourself out of. It's part of the reality of being human that our bones get more brittle as we age and our muscles get stiffer. And so it's a strong metaphor for us today, lest our faith do the same thing. When we've been following Jesus for a while, it's sometimes easy to get brittle and stiff about the way we do it. We start to think that only people who look like us or talk like us or think like us or worship like us are getting it right. And everybody else, Jesus, can you believe they're using your name? Hmm. We close the door to anyone else or just make it real clear when they show up that they're not welcome. And we start thinking the only way to do the Jesus thing is our way. And if the songs change or sound different or someone wants to do something new, oh boy. But Jesus takes this stuff really seriously. In fact, if you think about it, if you look at his ministry, when it comes to sin, the sin that we tend to get worked up about, Jesus meets with mercy and grace and forgiveness. He sits down and eats with tax collectors and prostitutes. But if you want to take off Jesus, I'm not exactly sure who's got that on their to-do list, but if you really want to make Jesus mad, use your faith or your piety as a weapon. Use it to slam the door in someone else's face. Use it for judgment instead of love. Make someone else stumble and doubt that God could ever love them. Better you are at the bottom of the harbor with rocks in your pockets, Jesus says. It's tough stuff. The thing is that this faith, we sometimes take it for granted. We sometimes act like it's something that we own, that we can wield in the world as a weapon. But the truth is, that this opportunity to be in relationship with the God who made heaven and earth, to be redeemed from sin we can't quite break free from, a phenomenal grace that lets us taste the kingdom of God now, it's a gift, an amazing grace gift that opens doors and crosses lines and lets even rot gut sinners like you and me in. It's a healing that we can't earn. And when we remember that, we can start to crawl out of the trap that our ego stumbled us into. When we remember that, and remember we're only here by the amazing grace of God, it can start to loosen up our stiff piety and soften our brittle hearts and clear our vision so that we can see each other as siblings and welcome each other with joy because here's another opportunity God has given me to practice loving my neighbor, to share this faith that was given to me as a free gift. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you please stand and let us sing.
children and heirs of God's promise, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Sustain all members of the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those undeserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, or any other disease. Provide them with peace and resilience. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Be with all in need of healing, especially those we name before you now, out loud or in the silence of our hearts. The family and friends of George Nolette, Della Pope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, musicians, readers, and greeters. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your saints, those we have known and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their examples and reassure us of your promised salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and find the communion cup that you should have received as you were coming in. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our responsibility and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We, we praise, praise you, O God. God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We, we bless, bless you, O God. God. We give thanks for your dear Son and the heart of human life near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank, thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. If you would take the bread from the bottom of the chalice, and as you receive it, no, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as we drink together, this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your Holy Spirit in our gathering within this meal, among your people, and throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, Holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, as the disciples ate and drank with their risen Lord, we are nourished with the very presence of Christ. Through this meal, may we be strengthened to keep your word and to proclaim the power of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand as you're able to receive God's blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. Go in peace and be the body of Christ. We will.